Welcome to the Vault Podcast. This is episode four, I believe, and today we're going to talk about the power of music. First, we're going to talk about what we've been listening to. Brent, what's been on your playlist? Actually, today it's been Testament. Awesome. <laughs> I've been jamming the good old uh, Souls in Black and uh, Demonic, actually, both of those. Which so. are two totally different types of music from the same band, which I love. Oh, yeah. that's. I was actually trying to talk to somebody about that today, and they kind of looked at me and rolled their eyes. But it is. I mean, it's. of course, those are two. I love both albums. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you've got, you know, one that's more, you know, along the lines of kind of Metallica-ish, and then you've got the other one, which is a lot lot heavier, more Pretty death metal death type. Metal. <laughs> but they're both fantastic albums. So what have you been listening to? Well, actually, pretty much everything that's on our pick we just updated the picks of the week. Basically, we just post on there what we've been listening to, and it's an interesting mix again for me. It's a lot of electronic music, nice red, skinny puppy, and then a lot of bluegrass infused black metal. I know that sounds weird, but I posted two songs on there, and one's got a banjo. It's pure black metal, and all of a sudden there's a banjo solo in the middle, and the other one is a one-man band from Kentucky. And that, that song is pure bluegrass, but the whole album, which I just ordered, and I actually got to order it from him. That's a, That was super Oh, cool. nice. Yeah. Like, I went to the regular website to order, and then I checked my PayPal receipt, and it was actually from, like, the account is in his name, so the artist is oh, that's getting awesome. the money and directly sending me the music, which we've talked about in past episodes. So yeah, and everything, about. yeah, and everything I've heard from them is awesome. I should have actually mentioned them, too, because I forgot they were on the pick list, sorry. But that was, I listened to uh, the one you put on the pick of the weeks, the Come All Ye Coal Miners. Yes, uh-huh. And that song was awesome, so I'm like, okay, let's see what else. Because, you know, you, I'm sorry, you look at the uh, band name and the way it's drawn, and it's black metal, you know. Yeah, which and, it is when you start listening, but. Right, and but, you know, it, it's bluegrass, too. So I started looking up some other stuff, and I mean, it's just, it's awesome. I couldn't what, believe how cool it was. And what he does is he, he does what, you know, the Europeans do. He basically infuses folk music with, and the folk music and the culture with black metal. And that's what they do here, but our folk music, especially where we're from, is bluegrass. Right. In my country. And that's exactly what he does. He does a perfect job. Before yeah, that's, on, I was, that's actually something I hadn't really... I mean, you know, you, it, you can you notice it, but you don't really consciously think about it. Yeah, because you're you know, just, it all the time. Well, right, right. And, you know, one great example of that's actually, I'm probably going to butcher the name, so, uh, but it's like that Sonic band, yeah, Sonic Sonic, whatever. Yeah. And, you know, you start getting into it, and, I mean, you know, great band, killer albums, but all their stuff is literally from their culture, like all of it. And it was something that I hadn't, I mean, you know, like I said, you're around it all the time, you notice it, but you don't always consciously think about it. So, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to, that's one thing I was going to add to it, is I, I kind of have a, a, a complaint. I guess. Uh, oh. You know, today we're talking about the power of music. Right now I'm going to tell you how irritating music makes me as we, <laughs> as we lead into this. Uh, because I, I am so sick, and you know, first off, we don't, we try to give honest opinions, and we don't want to butcher. You know, just because we don't like something, we're not going to say, hey, it's the worst. But this is a situation where I'm going to tell you it is the worst. And that is new country music. Oh, man. I've been exposed just in the past week um, at work. They switched our station to new country, and it's emphasis on new because that's what they say when they do their advertisements. And it's some of the most... Disgusting stuff I've ever heard in my life. I'm not talking lyrically or offensive. I'm just saying it sounds terrible. I mean, if I listen to country, I want to hear not a country guy with twang singing over an R&B hip hop beat. And I don't, it just I uh, Jason Aldean. That's that's one of the guys that was the that, uh, that burning it down song. That's the name. Oh of man, they, yeah. They that song like 50 times and it sucks. It's horrible. It's just, it just makes me want to vomit. And I love country music, so I hate country music. Uh, it's, well, I, I can't even talk. What do you guys think? I was gonna say, I've got one I think is actually even worse. And it's kind of, I don't know, I, I can't even say his name without getting upset, speaking of, you know, power of music. And that's Blake Shelton. Yeah. And, 
you know, I honestly I didn't know much about Blake Shelton until I heard his song Boys Round Here. And I learned all I needed to know about Blake Shelton from that song. It is just oh man, it's awful. I know it's popular and but I mean this song is literally making fun of its audience and people eat it up. And maybe that's what drives me nuts more than anything. Is and I don't mean like, you know, ICP, you know, made fun of their audience and stuff a little bit in some of their songs, but that was in like a joking kind of loving way. Yeah, yeah they're just having fun. Right. This was a I mean the chorus, part of the chorus is literally chew tobacco, chew tobacco, chew tobacco spit. Really? Just some great it, songwriting right there. Oh, isn't it? I mean, that's some deep emotional, powerful, lyrical, you know, stuff. But is that really where we're at in, in new country music? That that's what they come up with? And do people not understand that whenever he says that, they literally think you're a bunch of, you know, tobacco mouth filled hillbillies? Hey, the, the, the only thing I could give them on that is at least like uh, tobacco filled mouth hillbillies is actually kind of realistic in country music. I hear Jason Aldean, like baby girl, something. Well, yeah, there is that too. <laughs> so we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Basically, and you can see a great example of what we just gave you. You know, music that makes you react, makes you feel angry, it makes you feel great, it makes you feel nostalgic. Uh, which I'm, I got so much nostalgic stuff. Oh, uh, I do but, too. You know, people. I think too many people just listen to music. It's just background music. You know, iPod. They turn on their car radio. Uh, you know, whatever. And they don't actually take in the music. Because, I, I mean, I really don't know why, but ever since I've been a small kid introduced to music for the first time, it's not something that you just put on for background noise. If I want a background noise, I'll put on top radio. Right. But uh, what do you have to say on that? Uh, I completely agree. It's like today, it's it was a very rough day from the very beginning. And by the time I finally got to sit down and actually just kind of let everything kind of float off, I needed some kind of release, and so I chose Hate Breeds Destroy Everything. There you go. Because, I mean, it, it helps. <laughs> but, you know, and that's, you know, it was the catharticness of it all. I mean, it's getting it out. And that's part of music. It made me feel better. I mean, I'm not normally one for tough guy music and all that. I mean, I love Hate Breed. But, you know, usually the music kind of makes me angry, so I don't listen to it that often. But,. That was just, it was a moment and I needed it, and it was perfect. Yeah, while we're talking about emotions, I mean, this other end of the spectrum, uh, when I'm down, or even if I'm not down, and I'm just having an average day, uh, you know, the, they they start playing Christmas music on local radio, and it just totally makes me have an awesome day. Like, I just, I, I, it sounds, you know, I want to pump my fist listen, like I'm listening to Judas Priest and this stuff I'm actually listening to. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And yeah, I don't, yeah, it's crazy. But uh, well, I mean, how can you feel bad listening to Bing Crosby? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's exactly right. And he just, it, you know, a lot of people hate that music, and I don't know, I don't get it. But I don't I think it's awesome. And then the other thing I love listening to is the Hispanic stations that play all the mariachi music and there's some other styles that I, I don't actually know the name of. I just know there's tons of accordions and it, <laughs> all of them sound the same and they all rule. Yeah. Uh, and then moving on from that, that's kind of the emotional aspect. And there's more. I mean, you know, we could go on and on and on. But uh, one thing I want to talk about, too, is just how music will make you kind of associate different things with different songs. And sometimes they're not even related. Uh, one example I can give you right off. I can give you two great examples right off the bat. Uh, bluegrass music, you know. I was never really a fan, but they always played it at the theme park, Silver Dollar City. And if you've never been there, never heard of it, Google it. It's a pretty awesome place, 1800-style theme park. And they'd play bluegrass music and these hidden rock speakers. It, it looked like big rocks and boulders, but they're actually speakers. And they're playing bluegrass music through the whole park, everywhere. And you don't really pay attention to it because it's just around you all the time while you're there. But next thing you know, you hear a bluegrass song, you're like, oh, Silver Dollar City. And then all of a sudden you want to listen more and more and more of it, and then it turns into a genre that you actually like. And the other example right off that I can give is black metal. Um, it might sound cliche, but a lot of times I listen to black metal. All I think about is wintertime, darkness, caves, and just kind of ambient of just silence, nothingness. 
And like I said, that may be cliche to many, but that's truly kind of what I feel. I don't feel aggressive at all, and most people would think, oh, black metal, you know, human aggressive, satanic stuff, but I, I feel just the opposite. You got any quick examples? Uh, I usually tend to, whenever I hear stuff, I think back to, uh, you know, moments like, you know, like early 90s and late 80s hair metal. And like I said, the early 90s kind of rap. Uh, like, I mean, you know, the Rex in Effect and K7 and, you know, cheesy stuff like that. Yep. But it all reminds me, you know, of good times, you know, my sister, uh, you know, in her car Playing and all that. Games? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, we were even doing it in a Mustang at the time, you know, which is even better. Yeah. And, but it was just, you know, I think of a lot of that. And that's good. You know, that makes me feel good. And I'm like you. There's times, you know, I, I listen to black metal. And depending on who it is, if it's someone like Immortal, I tend to just laugh. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I love the band. I love their music. But if anybody watches the pick of the week I put up for the All Shall Fall, that video is hilarious. I mean, he starts doing a crab walk. Crab walk, yeah. And does this weird thing with his tongue and everything else. I mean, the whole video is just hilarious. And I cannot listen to Immortal and get mad. I just can't. Yeah, uh, it's, it's super heavy and powerful music, but you can't do it. Honestly. Yeah, and I just sit there, but I love jamming to it. And everybody's like looking at me like, what's wrong with you as I'm sitting here laughing, you know, listening to it. But I'm like you, I, I don't get mad or aggressive or anything like that when I listen to black metal. I usually get really calm. Yeah, and especially, especially the ambient stuff, you know, like you said, yeah. there's different sub-genres, I guess, within certain genres, but a lot of the lower kind of ambient black metal stuff, it, it's, it's really kind of soothing even. Well, right, and especially uh, one quick example is the uh, uh, Borknagar. I can't remember yeah. the name of the actual album right off. But it's got the, uh, oh, dadgummit, I can't remember the name of the song even. Anyway, it's a fantastic album if I can ever remember it. But I can sit there and listen to that, and I just, I mean, it just calms me. It's soothing. I know most people are like, what? But I just, I love it. It's something you can kind of get lost in. And like you said, I mean, you start thinking of, like, weird kind of, you know, sitting in a cave and chilling. But yeah, maybe that's just me. But no, it's not. I'm I'm exactly the same way. Um, well, you know, just moving on. Um, country music, like the old country music, you know, um, Charlie Pride, Waylon, Merle Haggard, uh, Conway Twitty. That's what. I was oh, thinking. that that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> that and uh, when I hear Southern rock and and you know any kind of Southern rock, Allman Brothers, Skinner, Marshall Tucker Band. Nice. I can, I can, Molly Hatch, you can go on and on. Anytime I think of those, it reminds me, this is really strange, but it reminds me of truck stops and flea markets. Because oh, wow. When you go to those places, that's the kind of music they're playing all the time, no matter where the location is in the U.S., no matter how updated it is. That's like all they're playing. And they still sell, I remember it's probably even, probably about a year ago, um, I was just kind of strolling through a truck stop on a, you know, we were driving, it was like a three-hour drive or something, and I stopped at a truck stop. They were still selling Leonard Skinner cassette tape. Yes. And they were like two bucks, and I'm like, you know, because people still, you know, they're so, not that this is bad, but I guess so many people that come through there are like so stuck behind in the times that, you know, they're still, Leonard Skinner's still the best band in the world, and the cassette tapes are what's going on, you know. So that's just, when I hear that stuff, that's what I think about. Um, and back to your, your 80s metal comment, um, I just, it reminds me of fun times. You know, you see these videos, and they're just really decadent, and they're running around acting a fool, and, you know, the music's kind of upbeat, and it just makes you catch, it makes you feel good. And that's, you know, there's just so much when you start talking 80s. The metal stuff I just mentioned, but then even like the pop music, uh, I remember sitting in, this is going to sound stupid, most people probably wouldn't think I could remember this, but I remember sitting in strollers in the mall, and just, you know, they would always have those uh, monitors throughout the department stores that were running music videos, and I remember like Madonna videos, and I'm sure there's some other, a lot of the new wave bands, and synth bands that I can't remember, like, um, uh, what's that, Gary Newman, Cars, 
Oh, nice. You know, that kind of stuff. That stuff was always playing at the mall. Um, and then the mall stuff like like uh, Tiffany and Debbie Gibson and stuff like that. Uh, Stacy Q, that's another one. Um, all that stuff is so terrible, but I love listening to it because it just makes me think of going back to the mall in the 80s and 90s, hanging out at the arcade, going to the food court, just having a good time. What else you got? I j the whole time you were talking about that, all I could think of was Flock of Seagulls and Hungry Like a Wolf. There you go. That's two great examples. And, of course, I've, I I got to admit, guilty pleasure, I do enjoy Duran Duran. Yeah, me too. You know, a lot of people look at me very strange, but I, I thoroughly do. But, no, as far as, like, examples like that, the closest I've got is probably uh, blues, like the older uh, blues, like Muddy Waters, like, you know, a lot of the early stuff with that. I actually am a big Muddy Waters fan. I, I enjoy him a lot. But even, like, you know, the Robin Trower. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Even something like the Clapton and Stevie Ray Vaughan and all that, I just, I don't know, for some reason it makes me want to, like, light up a cigarette and get me, you know, a bottle of scotch and just, you know, space out and kind of get gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, big time Robin Trower. I, that's the exact same feeling I have when I listen to them. Yeah, it's just, it's total relaxation. And, I mean, it probably really shouldn't be, considering a lot of the times, you know, it's actually kind of sad what they're, you know, talking about. You know, they're talking about some rough times and everything, but at least some are. But, no, I do. I just, I picture, like, a smoky room with some really smooth scotch. And, of course, that just makes me happy in and of itself, too. But that's a different topic, so. It's amazing how they can capture emotion, blues bands making you happy, but I totally agree. I mean, I listen to... I wouldn't say there's probably a day goes by where a Robin Trower song doesn't come on my iPod on shuffle, and I just, it's just awesome. I mean, it's another, it's just great music. So, um, moving on, this is kind of we'll, we'll, this is kind of the last part of the show, um, talking about you know sending you back to places. We could go out, we could almost probably make a whole show on this, but concerts, concerts. Oh experience. man. Uh, you know, I just just hilarious, ridiculous stuff that goes. You know, you're traveling to the concert during the concert, traveling back from the concert. Um, I remember, like, going to OzFest, and, you know, we, I, it was that year, it was a year we went in, with Cradle of Filth, and I wanted to see them so bad, and I remember going through their autograph line twice, and they caught, <laughs> they caught me the second time and asked why I was coming through it again. I just remember, uh, I remember the Sarah Jezebel, I remember her hitting on you, in like, very... <laughs> well, it was like very bizarre ways too. I mean, it was just kind of weird, but yeah, I mean, it was like, and maybe that was just her personality and just caught me weird because she just kind of stared at me. They are British, and we're not used to them too, though. And that is that that could be it, but I mean, I, I still think she was kind of hitting on you a little bit there. Uh, oh. And I remember thinking like how much Danny actually reminded me of like a really stoned or really drunk uh, Jack Sparrow. Yeah, actually, that's a that's a really good comparison. I mean, like the rolling the eyes and moving the hands and head and everything. The way he spoke, the words he used and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that and watching me go from like one like three members of the band from him, but to, by the time they signed the poster and the CD that I had, and got to him, he was already like what was it eight shots of Jaeger in. Yeah, that's all he said. That's about all he said to me my second time through the autograph line. He's he gave me this weird look like he knew I'd been there before, and he just holds up and he goes, "Cheers," and yep. signed my thing and said, "Bugger off." Yep. And you know, more concert stories. Um, probably one that's gonna stick with me forever is it was sometime in high school, locally, Kitty, Nonpoint, and there's a couple other bands played. Looking back on it, like the concert was just kind of so-so, you know, it was okay, but. Right. It was December. It was about 10 degrees. It was snowing, and here we are stuck out in the line. And if you've ever been to concerts, you always know they run late. The doors never open when they're supposed to. So here we are in the sleet and snow, and a bunch of us are freezing. We get the bright idea to start a fire, and there was somebody that takes their jacket, sets it on fire in the middle of the road. Cops show up, have to put the fire out, and tell us to clean it up. We didn't clean it up, and. Ended up going to the concert, and that was that. So no, no harm, no foul, and anything. But it's just you know, anytime I hear Kitty or anytime I hear Nonpoint, that's the first thing I think about. It's going back to that concert. 
Uh, you got any more concert stories? Well, I think of some more. Oh, I've got a bunch. Like every time I hear uh, Three Inches of Blood's "Advance and Vanquish," I think of uh, the one singer. What was his name Jamie? Yeah. That was on that album. Uh, so they're making fun of like you were wearing like a Cinderella shirt or something to the oh, concert. Oh yeah, they, they, they told me they would only sign sign my uh, CD if I burned the shirt. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I remember whenever we were at the, uh, one of the, like, I say festival, it wasn't really a festival, uh, but it was, you know, a big draw for, you know, this area. And it was whenever Slipknot and Disturbed and Lincoln Park and I think Papa Roach and yes. Mudvayne were there. I remember this big old burly dude, you know, shirt off, you know, I think he's even wearing, like, you know, tight jeans, you know, acting like he's all big, bad, tough guy. Oh, I'm going to show these people how to mosh. And it was during Disturbed. And it was, uh, the song was Down With The Sickness. And I remember at the end of it, he came back missing two teeth. He sure showed them, didn't he? He did, he did. And I still, to this day, every time I hear that song, I laugh at that guy. I mean, maybe I shouldn't, but I still do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a great great example, and it just reminds you of that concert. You're never going to forget about it. No, and, you know, on a kind of a tragic level, uh, that was the concert that the lady, like, right next to me ended up accidentally stuck to the mosh pit and somebody tripped and fell. I mean, it was purely accidental. You know, they, you know, everybody around did what they could to help her afterwards, but somebody tripped and fell and I actually watched her knee like separate, like the joint like popped out and I'm like standing there next to her and I see like, you know, complete dislocation of her knee. I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, I, I was feeling sick and everything. It was unreal. And like I said, every time, I don't remember what song it was, but just the whole Iowa, because that was whenever they were first uh, doing songs from Iowa. I don't even think the album had been released yet. And it's like every time I think of that, I think of that mosh pit and that poor girl's like broke leg. <laughs> and I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I still like Slipknot and everything. It's just, that it's was... another example of what we're talking about. Right. I want to go back to your three inches of blood, because uh, this is something that stuck with me, still stick with me. I don't know if you'll. I'm sure you'll remember once I say it. But um, three inches of blood. That they they were not popular at all at the time. In fact, I think there was like maybe 50 people at that show. But they're opening up for Metal Church, legendary Metal Church. You know, if anybody knew metal from the 80s, you know Metal Church. Right. And you know, we're we're here to have a good time. I look outside and Metal Church pulls up in a Winnebago, not a van, <laughs> not a bus, but yep. a Winnebago. They get out and the singer. Has, I don't think it was the original singer at the time. He has like a fishnet shirt with a pentagram, and I'm like, oh boy. And the guitar player right next to him has shorts and a Hawaiian shirt on. Him. Yep. And I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in a metal band. You know, like a guy with a Hawaiian shirt and then a pentagram guy right next to him. So. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I would say one of the weirdest ones that I had it was uh. I don't think, I don't remember if you went to the concert or not, but it was uh, Chimera and I think Danzig. They opened for Danzig, I think. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, and it was a buddy of ours and I were trying to find the lead singer for Chimera after they left. And we saw him, like, walking out the door, so we're like, oh, all right, cool, you know, we'll holler at him, you know, before he gets away. And, you know, maybe get some stuff signed and whatever. And he turns the corner right there, and, I mean, he's not, you know... What would you say? Maybe 20 yards from the doors there to that corner? Yeah, probably about that. And, you know, so we kind of hurry up and get to that corner, and the guy's completely gone. And, I mean, just completely vanished. And we're like, what the hell, you know? I mean, where did the guy go? He, you know, he couldn't have just vanished. And so we proceed to walk around, you know, the whole building. We get back to where the buses are. Complete embarrassing moment of my life uh, as far as concerts go. There's this guy sitting on the park bench by the bus. You know, here I am wearing my Chimera shirt, you know, thinking I'm all cool as the band I came to see. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Danzig, but I was at the time I was there to see Chimera. So he's sitting there talking on a cell phone, and he kind of looks at me. He's like, hey, what's going on, man? Can I help you with something? I was like, well, I thought I saw a banger walk around here. He's like, did he vanish again? I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, well, do you know if any of the other members of the band are on the bus? He's like, well, why are you looking for them? I was like, well, I'd like to get some stuff signed and everything. And he's like, well, I'll sign them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, who the hell are you? <laughs> you know? 
and he just kind of smiles at me, and he's like, yeah, um, I'm the drummer? And it's like, oh, no. Crap. <laughs> that was an ultimate spinal tap moment for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just, it was unreal. And I felt so bad, but it's like, I, here it is the band I've gone to see, and I don't even recognize the drummer. It's like, I am seriously an idiot. <laughs> I mean, he was totally cool about it and stuff. And, you know, he went and hollered at the rest of the guys. Uh, we never found the lead singer. Wow. That entire night. I think we ended up seeing him as we were walking back to the car, walk out of a bar somewhere. Huh. But I don't remember ever actually seeing him again. And they just were kind of like, yeah, he disappeared again, didn't he? Yeah, he does that. It's really weird. It's like, so every what? Time, every time you hear Carmira, that's exactly what Yeah. Goes. Yeah. Uh, I got two. Uh, I thought I had two. I know I got one more example. Uh, and this is you. You weren't with us. This is hilarious. Uh, talking about the '80s metal, having a good time. You know, we were talking about that earlier. So, um, you know, we went to. I think Carl's they were having kind of kind of a weird, off the wall place to have it, but they had. Uh, oh, you were with me with a rat and Quiet Riot. Oh yeah, the rock never stops. Yeah, that. that yeah. yeah. So you were there. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if you remember this, but it's hilarious. And anytime I hear Quiet Riot, I think about this. So we're sitting outside, and we're right next to this guy that was a total 80s metal guy in the day. You can tell, except he's like he's like a dad now, and he reeks of, like, brute aftershave. <laughs> and he's got his hair all slicked back. He's like big macho guy. Like, yeah, I saw Ozzy. I saw this. I saw, you know, all, all the time. Like, give us his 80s extravaganza stories. And across the way from the entrance is this kind of not... I don't know, it's probably like a 10-story building. And probably out of the fourth story, a guy opens a window and yells across, who's playing tonight? And this big meathead guy turns around and goes, fans that matter, like Quiet Riot. And as soon as he says Quiet Riot, the guy just slams the window and goes off. Like, that doesn't show you how important these bands are. <laughs> Man, I'd forgotten all about that. My memory from that concert was totally different because of who was just, like, down the row from me. And I don't want to get into that here because we're not <laughs> trying to do a X-rated show. And I mean, it was it was bad. Yeah, that I, I think that would probably sum up the '80s right there. It could, yeah, it actually <laughs> really does. Is the sad thing about it. And I think these people were probably doing the same thing in the '80s. Yeah, they looked the same. You know. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was not good. Uh, but to kind of go back a little bit to uh, just the power of music. Uh, and I know you were there whenever we saw uh, Judas Priest at Ozfest. Yes. And I mean, they put on just an amazing show. I had never seen them live. You know, we got to go backstage and see the motorcycle, and you know, meet a couple of them and everything. I mean, it was cool. I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. But they went out there and put on one of the best shows I've ever seen. And I remember uh, their guitar player just, like, sat down after the show and was just crying. Yep, I, I do remember that, yeah. And, I mean, it was just the fan appreciation for what the show they had just put on was so overwhelming that he was literally in tears. I mean, that, that just sticks with me because these guys absolutely lived and breathed at least that night. I mean, that music, it was, it was amazing. And for yep. that guy to break down like he did... Is just you know one of the most powerful moments I remember of any concert. And that was one of their first. Uh, that was their first run of their full reunion in I yeah. don't know how many 25 years or something. And yeah. the way, the the fact that people still remember, like regardless of how old they are, they can still put out the music. They can still play. They still mean something to people like me and you and all the other thousands of people behind us at the show because we we're like five feet from the stage. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing that still, 25 years after the band initially got rid of the singer, Rob Halford, and then he comes back, that people still remember it still means something to them, and they still pay the ticket to show up and have a performance like that enough to make the you know band member break down. Yeah. Yeah, I just I thought it was amazing. All right, on that note, we'll pretty much close up the show. Um, make sure to continue to check out the episodes of the podcast. Check out our reviews. We're trying to do one to two reviews a day. Sometimes more, sometimes less. But check out the reviews, and you know, you never know when the review may spawn you to go out and make a purchase. Uh, I actually haven't yet, but Sturgill Simpson review you did is on the list. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready. 
Go ahead. I was gonna say I'm getting ready to actually do the uh, his newest one, the Meta Modern Sounds in Country Music. Uh -huh. uh, just real quick, it's if you like the first one, this one's honestly I think it's a little bit better. I don't know that I'll rate it a whole lot higher, but it's just it's a lot tighter sound, and the guy I think's honestly really coming into his own. Yeah, you're just gonna make me have to spend even more money now, I guess. <laughs> no, that's good. So check out the reviews, check out the podcast. Uh, we got Twitter, we have Facebook. Just check them out on our contact section. Also on the contact section, you know, use any three of those avenues to help spread the word, give us more listeners. And if you have any questions on anything or any topics you want discussed or albums you want reviewed, send them in. If you're an unsigned band and you want your music out there, we're looking to get compilations. It doesn't matter if you're one man band, if you're a punk band, metal band, country band, or you just play a kazoo. Just if you got music and you got it recorded and you want it released, let us know. Brent, you got anything to add before we close out? No, not really. All right, with that, have a good one. Keep listening to music. Peace. Take care.